Well, hello folks, welcome back to Three Zen. So when I was in Thailand, um, we would have these uh, squadron parties every now and then at the, um, in our hooch area. Now the way our hooch area was configured, we had a, a center hooch, oh, I don't know, a building maybe uh, 30 by 30 feet, something like that. And then there were two rows of, uh, call them dormitory rooms, rooms um, on either side of that. And uh, usually we had two men to a room in those days. So we would gather in the center hoots. That was kind of our um, social area. And we would play poker, drink beer, tell lies, whatever. Uh, oftentimes we'd have a barbecue, and those turned out pretty good. At any rate, uh, uh, we would sit there and converse and so forth. Um, really enjoy ourselves. Well, this one night, the... Uh, party began to break up, I would imagine around 10, 30, 11 o'clock as they were prone to do. And uh, our fire, we would have a, a small fire that we would sit around, a uh, campfire if you, and um, fire began to uh, draw down, uh, uh, I guess we didn't think far enough ahead. So we were sitting there, but we had some stories to tell and um, didn't feel right not having a campfire. Next thing I know, John Engel shows up with uh, a pair of chalks that he had gotten off one of the trucks uh, from a squatter in a unit next door. I think it was AB Triple C. It's the unit. Uh, he had gone over there, and on their uh, squatter and truck, they had chalks. So he grabbed these chalks, threw them in the fire. He says, these will do for a while till we get some more firewood. The funny thing about that is... Um, that anti-reflective paint they put on there kept popping and throwing um, throwing sparks into the air, which lent to the story. Anyway, so this one night we're sitting around and um, pretty soon guys began to drift off. And uh, there was a, a guy that I really admired, uh, Ren Kroll and Lorenzo Kroll. And we, uh, I don't know, we just saw eye to eye on a a lot of things and really enjoyed each other's company. So we were sitting there talking and trading stories. And I later found out he had a, a pretty deep interest in military history as I do. So we're trading stories back and forth, just, just really enjoying the evening. And pretty soon we look around and we're the only two guys there. But thank God we had enough beer to keep the, keep the conversations going. So we're sitting there drinking beer and, uh, we got kind of annoyed that everybody walked off because we had some great stories to tell and it was kind of impolite for them just to, to walk off. So I don't know how it started or how it happened, but um, one of us ended up on the roof of the uh, hooch area and the other one was handing the bicycles up that uh, were parked there. And we just took our time. Um, and took every bicycle uh, belonged to the guys in the squatter and parked them alongside the on the roof. And uh, then climbed down. I can't remember. I think I was probably up on the roof. Who knows? Or it could have been Wren. But uh, when we finished, we sat there and looked up on the roof, and there's all these bicycles neatly parked on the roof. So anyway, we sat down and continued our discussion. And it wasn't long before daylight. Wouldn't you know? Dang, didn't realize time passed that fast when you're having fun, but it did. So we're sitting there thinking about, you know what? We probably ought to bust this party up, um, maybe go to bed for a couple hours. And about that time, uh, Buddy Sam's walked out of the uh, his area, and he was all ready to get on his bicycle and go to work. So he walks over to the bike rack, starts looking around. He can't find his bike. Uh, and he comes over and he says, would you two have to have any idea where my bike is? And we both point up on the roof. And Buddy looks up on the roof at his bicycle, looks back at us, and just shakes his head and walks off. Anyway, we climbed up and got him down before we went to bed. Uh, I think, and I'll ask you not to hold me to this. This is one of those stories I'm not real positive of. But I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Ren might have been the AC on a mission they had um, 
at Karak before I got there. Now, our airplanes were configured uh, uh, to refuel helicopters in flight. And to that end, we had an 11,000 pound fuel tank in the belly and uh, of the uh, C-130. In addition, what we would do if we were refueling helicopters uh, up north or um, in bad guy country, we would lower the ramp and we'd have a loadmaster back there with a um, flare gun. And the idea was if he saw a uh, surface air missile shot off at us, the, the only threats that we, were, we felt we would have, uh, have were those uh, handheld strellas. Um, anyway, his job was to take that flare gun and shoot off a flare in the hopes of um, the seeker on the missile going after the flare versus our engines. Anyway, give him something to do before we got hit, I suppose. Anyway, so this one day, uh, they're flying around, and this loadmaster decided to practice his quick draw. Now, quick draw on a flare gun, give me a break. You know, we don't. Even, I don't even think we had a holster for the thing. But he was screwing around with the thing in the back and inadvertently fired it off. Well, the flare went off inside the cargo bay, and what it did is it rolled up underneath that fuel tank, and landed on a comm cord. Once it hit on that comm cord, it shorted out all communications within the uh, airplane. I mean, it was just squealing and whatnot. So they had this flare burning underneath this fuel tank and comm cord going out and they couldn't communicate. Uh, no one could tell anyone else what had happened. So it took uh, a little bit of uh, creativity to bring the um, bring the situation under control. And like I said, I think Ren was the AC on that. And I'm trying to figure out through a couple of contacts who might have been the other crew members on that. And maybe I can get the story straight. If it differs much from this, I'll come back and straighten it out. At any rate, uh, Ren and I developed a nice friendship. And uh, last time I saw him, he was back at the uh, Air Force Academy, 1976. And... Um, he was a professor there. And then here recently, this is, uh, today is the 26th of January, uh, 2023. And I just learned about uh, last week that Ren had passed away in 2014. Just heartbreaking to see these guys I flew with and uh, enjoyed so much pass away. But I suppose it, it happens to all of us. And uh, I just wanted to take a moment here and share a couple stories about Ren. Uh, what a great guy he was, and uh, I really enjoyed flying with the man and enjoyed our time together. So that's it uh, for the rescue uh, squadron today, and uh, we'll be back with you uh, soon. Take care, and uh, nice to see everybody.